ask him today. Good enough. The next day of the week. No, we're going to try. I'm going to shoot for every day. Um, if we could get some, we don't have any changes anymore. So if I do, if I could get there the next day, it'll be cool for me. Uh, once we, yeah, once we get switched to the new to timer, so a lot of that force. We don't have to worry about it. Thank you for your I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Ellen City Area School Board combined meeting. Uh, April 9th, 2015. We can have a roll call. Mr. Zerone. Mr. Bazzelli. Mr. Cortez. Here. Mr. Garda. Here. Mrs. Grossman. Here. Mr. Morella. Mr. Newpower. Here. Mrs. Pancera. Here. Mr. Petrelli. Here. Mr. Stevenson. Here. Mr. Mancini. Here. Mr. Decare. Here. Okay. We can rise for a moment of silent meditation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Visitor here tonight. We're honored as a community and a school to have such an accomplishment. Uh, we had talked about this last month and we're able to put it together for this month's board meeting. But I want to introduce you to our state champion swimmer, uh, Taylor Petrak, and her dad is present with her tonight. Um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Newpower. I think he has uh, some other comments and, and something for her. So she has her medals. And uh, we'll maybe give her the floor for a second. If yeah, you guys. absolutely. I mean, it's uh, quite an accomplishment for uh, anyone to do what you've done. And I think, as we talked about it in our last meeting, uh, to do it in the manner that you've done it as, a, as an independent uh, is even more uh, a staggering accomplishment uh, to not have the support of you know, a, a full team of uh, other athletes. So we're very, very proud of you. and. Uh, would like to hear a, a little bit about your uh, experience. Did I? Get up? <laughs> 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 your medals up. Okay. Let me see. I don't know what you want me to talk about. <laughs> what was the highlight of your, your uh, tournament, your accomplishment? Um, well, I went to States and it was my second year this year, so I was more calm than I was last year. Going as a freshman, I really didn't know last year what it was all like. So having it be my second year, it was um, more relieving to know what was actually going on. And um, it starts with, with with Eels, and then you get four automatics for our district. And I played second in both my events, so I was an automatic. And then um, I went to states, and actually, the girl from our district, from Guyville Catholic, she had actually scratched. So I was number one seed for the 50 and second for the 100 at States, and I got first in the 50 and third in the 100. How long have you been swimming? Um, I started swim lessons ever since I was a baby, but um, 
I started like club swimming whenever I was about five. So uh, I'm 15 now, so like 10 years. <laughs> so I'm kind of still a baby. That is correct. Out of the Riverside pool. Yeah, I've club swam with their team. It's Riverside Aqua Club of Elwood ever since. And um, yep, I, and because we don't have a team, um, that's how I practice every day. And throughout the summer, I keep all my training going. So everybody asks me, when's your season start? When it's over? Never ends. <laughs> I'm with like a mo one month break right now, but I run track. So. What's your ultimate aim? Um, the Olympics? Club or varsity? Or both? Okay. Both. Um, varsity for like for Elwood, just to keep going for my next few years and just place as well as I can. Um, you always strive to do your best, but you can never control how your teammates or even just like other competitors swim. So just best times for me. And um, they actually, USC Swimming had just lowered their junior national cuts. So like for 50 freestyle, which what I won at States, they dropped it by a whole second. And for a 50, that's a lot of time. So um, trying to go for junior national cuts right now. And maybe if I get this, something new. <laughs> We should have uh, a uh, certificate. Yeah, that's the first. Taylor, we have a uh, certificate from the uh, Elwood City Area School District uh, School Board of Directors in recognition of outstanding athletic achievement. First place in the 50 yard freestyle and third place in the 100 yard free freestyle at the PIAA Swimming Finals. Taylor Petrak has awarded this certificate of recommendation. So we'd like to present this to you. Teachers and um, speech pathologists 
And uh, I just want to take my hat off to teachers that are willing to give up a Saturday <coughs> spring. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a nice day, and we're going to be in the library working 9 to 3 um, on Saturday. But we are very eager to learn new things and um, prepare for our dyslexia pilot um, kickoff, which will start uh, next fall. And we have another week long training also, but the first one is this Saturday. And we have a parent who's volunteered to do a Zumba up on to raise money for our Elwood City Bread Basket, and which is our backpack program. So it should be really fun. I'm going to do some things for the kids so they can bring, if they have little kids, they, they can bring the little kids. And um, I'm hoping to have a team that will entertain the, the smaller children by the moms that are the dads or whoever else wants to do the zoom with on um, we'll take care of the kids and it'll be a great fitness night raising money for our backpack program so we can send food home on the weekends that's all i have do we have a day yet for the zoom with on um, i moved it to a wednesday instead of a friday and i think it is i want to say the 15th of may yeah, that's a friday friday's the 15th then it's that's the 13th, um, 13th. Introduce uh, Greg Smith and Carl Cromer from the Mets. Um, they wanted to come talk today about the, uh, the school for the lunch and the breakfast program that they're in charge of. So, floor is yours. Thank you. you can stand um, up if you want. Or you okay. Want to well, thank you for the opportunity. It's been a while. I think it's been since like last August since I got a chance to talk with you guys. We just wanted to give you an update on what we've been able to do and some of the accomplishments that we've had. So. Uh, came in with a uh, pretty big, with the meeting with Richard and Mr. Mancini, had a pretty big goal to hit. Um, the district was down around 50,000 lunch meals, and with the goal, with, you know, was having some marching orders, we want to get those meals back, what can you do? So we put together a plan, and what I wanted to do was to share that plan with you, where we are to date, and then where I'm projecting that we're going to end up. So. Um, Carl what has been working very, honestly very closely with the group we put together with expanded options at the elementary school. We have five options every day there. We have 10 to 12 in the high school middle school. Uh, we added uh, and changed the, we added a concept right onto the main serving line and then we changed that back line from an a la carte only into a reimbursable meal line because I really thought that that's what we needed to do there. So. Uh, and then one of the keystones to be able to do this was to offer every day a, a really wide variety of fruits and vegetables to make sure that the kids were eating the way they should. And according to the, the latest regulations from the National School Lunch Program, fruit is, and vegetables are really the key to making that plan work. So we offer a lot. We offered, uh, we, we, offer, we followed a separate group, but we go way beyond, quite honestly, here what we need to do. So the result of that is that as of the March period, we are almost 15,000 more meals ahead of what the budget was when we came in, and it's a little over 14,675 to be exact. But, uh, and I'm projecting that by the end of the year, we'll end up doing 20,000 more meals than what the budget was that, that Richard and Mr. Mancini gave me. That, I think that's pretty good. When you consider that we're down 41 students, and while 41 students may not sound like a lot, at the rate of participation that we have, that's around 4,500 meals alone. So I'm proud to be able to stand here in front of you and say that we, in the first year, if we'd have had those 41 students, we would be halfway towards recapturing that 50,000 meals. Pretty happy with that. Um, the, uh, Carl handles that if there's any kind of comments at all, we, we Quite honestly, there's very few we've been able to handle them internally. 
I think we've grown the program. We've really um, tried to work with the people that were here and they have a really great staff. Um, Steve has been great with us, and especially in setting it up. Uh, worked very hard in the summer to make the thing work, and I, I, I think I couldn't be happier. Some of the challenges that we do have now that, in, in, that we overcame if we even getting those numbers are that the National Coal Lunch Program has a, this year came out with a whole grain uh, mandate that all the, all the products that you serve had to be 100% uh, whole grain. Well, that's pasta, pierogies, stuff you wouldn't think of, really. Pizza, breadsticks, and a lot of those things, quite honestly, are not, uh, have not been accepted very well by the students here. And, and if you follow, they, they haven't been accepted by a lot of students all over the country. So, um, so uh, but we've been able to manage the program to where we're offering those products uh, as we need to, but offering other things that the kids like as well. One of the, another challenge in doing that is not only do we need to offer those products, but quite honestly, they in general cost twice as much as their non-whole grain counterpart. So not only, it's sort of like a double win. Uh, while we're selling less of them, I'm spending more money to be able to do that. Uh, we offered um, that alone, when, this year in particular, we've had a, a it's been a interesting weather year. We've had 15 two-hour delays and three closures. Now, we've pretty much made, I think we've made all the, through April, we've made all the closures up, is that correct? Uh, but it's been challenging trying to make those, you know, trying to make that all work. But uh, we've been able to do it and grow the business. One of the, uh, another challenge in doing all this has been, while we are literally on a pretty, a, a pretty good skyrocketing, in fact, to get needles, the cost of food is about 5% higher than what we thought it would be. A lot of that is from the regulations that we quite honestly weren't. And the way they set the regulations up, they don't tell you what they're going to be before you before you actually do the budget. They sort of tell you after they, you know. So, uh, but we're managing, Carl said, has done a great job in managing all of that down. Uh, I think it's been a really good experience here for us. Hopefully it's been a good experience for you too. Uh, and. I think that the students here and, and what I get it from the faculty and staff every time I come is that it's very real positive. So, uh, if anybody has a question, I'd be happy to answer that. You know, it's an observation. I'm sure it doesn't mean it, but in a town like Elwood City, you go to a group of young men and women who have eaten pasta all their lives, cooked by their grandmothers and their aunts and uncles and mothers and tell them it's going to be whole wheat yeah right you're not going to get it that's the challenge we're a little too attached that, that's the challenge <laughs> yeah, I, 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 when you were a kid yeah. would you have eaten whole wheat pasta i won't eat it now <laughs> well, I the, the absolute I worst guess. one quite honestly is uh, macaroni and cheese the elbow macaroni is darker than a tabletop and so by the time you had cheese on it <laughs> the kids won't even touch it. We don't even serve it anymore. And quite honestly, that's a commodity product that the government sends you. And I literally almost can't use it. So. Send it back, don't stay here. You didn't send it down anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we will be bringing the board a budget in May to consider. And uh, Renee, we are going to look at the community eligibility provision between uh, Greg and I and see if it fits or see if we are eligible for it. We're also probably going to have to take a look at our price structure at this point. Uh, there is a PDE mandate, I guess a federal mandate, that you have a certain price set, a certain price point, because if they're going to provide you the reimbursement, then you have to be selling it at a certain price. So we'll be looking at those couple of issues uh, when we get to you back, back in there. Now, I did, as far as the CEP goes, I did do some legwork in between the time we met today and now, and there is some information on it. I'm not qualified enough to be able to give you all the ins and outs of that. It, it's quite complicated. There's, there's a direct certification part of that that really, that you have to hit a 40% mark, and that would come from the state. The state would actually give you the, that information. Uh, but we do offer at Erie School District, which is on that program, and if you would like, I can certainly have the general managers and the district manager from that school come down and say, here's how the program works, and here's how, you know, here's, here's the, the benefit or not benefit for you. I'll call up the state and see if you okay. qualify first. I mean, I don't want to, because we're not at 40% at this point. Not on direct search, I don't believe you are. You might have 40 because that's pretty reduced, but not direct search. Okay, so we'll follow up on that. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Charles. Oh, no problem. <laughs> 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 no, part of the, the, this one this evening was really warming up. <laughs> Thanks, folks.
The total investments on March 31st, 2015 were $625,527.32, and the total available in the checking account was a $363.32. For a total available of $625,890.64. I move the Capital Reserves Fund Treasurer's Report for March 2015 be approved as presented. Second. Second. Mr. Stevenson, any questions? Any objections? Motion passes. Number 10, Capital Reserves Fund Accounts Payable Report. In your folder is the Capital Reserves Fund Account Payable Report. Included is check 1439 amounting to $17,244. I move that the Capital Reserves Fund Account Payable Check be approved as presented. Second. Mr. Carter, any questions? Any objections? Motion passes. I would also ask that the following reports be made part of the minutes of this meeting. As of March 31st, 2015, Tax Collection Report, Revenue Verse Budget, Expenditures Verse Budget, Investment Reports, Investment Earnings Report, Athletic Facility Fund Report, Helling Stadium Century Club. <coughs> Mr. Sorrell, <coughs> you part of this evening's minutes. Sure. Thank you, sir. Number 11, Quarterly Earned Income Tax Report. In your folder is the Quarterly Earned Income Tax Report as of March 31st, 2015. I move the report be approved as presented. Second. Second. Any questions? Any objections? Motion passes. Number 12, Lawrence County Career and Technical Center Havoc Financing. The Lawrence County Career and Technical Center will be play, replacing its Havoc system. An estimated $2 million project with each member district paying a portion of the cost based on market value. I move that the district share in the approximate amount of $283,600 be paid in options, did we decide A? A, in a lump sum prior to the end of the 2014 15 fiscal year. Second. Second by Mr. Cortez. Any questions? Any objections? Motion passes. Number 13. Deputy Tax Collector. Act 164-2014 requires that local tax collectors appoint deputy tax collectors in the case of inca incapacitation. Rosina Betts Wayne Township Tax Collector has appointed William Betts, Jr. as Deputy Tax Collector for Wayne Township. I move that the appointment be acknowledged and approved. Second, Mr. Leroy Cortez. Any questions? Any objections? Motion passes. Number 14, <coughs> Repository Tax Sale Approval. Mary Beth Stevenson has submitted a bid of $500 for a property located at 730 Waltham Avenue, Elwood City, tax ID 14-014500. In your folder is a bid acceptance form for a repository property. I move that the bid $500 be accepted and the business manager be authorized to execute the form and return it to the Lawrence County Tax Claim Bureau. Second. Mr. Carter, any questions? Any objections? Motion passes. Number 15, Consolidated Communications Agreement. In your folder is an agreement with Consolidated Communications to provide local and long distance telephone service effective April 10, 2015. I move the agreement be approved as presented. Second. Second. Mr. Trelli, any questions? Any objections? Motion passes. That's all I have, Mr. Thank you, Mrs. Grossman. We'll move on to uh, personnel and education, Mr. Garner. Thank you, Mr. President. Number 16, interns, internship student. I move that Thomas Murray, DCI Career Institute student, be, <coughs> be approved for an unpaid technology uh, externship 
new supervision development effort effective April 10, 2015 through May 14, 2015. Second. Second. Mr. Keller. Any questions? Any objections? Motion passes. Number 17, retirements. Uh, Mrs. Agnes Stefan, second grade teacher. Mr. Frank Cloud, elementary physics ed teacher. Ms. Chris uh, Blue Door, secondary guidance counselor, and Mr. Dave Bailondo, Hartman, sixth grade teacher, have submitted their re uh, resignations for the purpose of retirement effective June 3rd, 2015. I move the resignations be accepted. Second. Mr. Cortez. Any questions? I'll just make a, a comment. Those folks were all here when I was in school. <laughs> yeah. so we're losing the. Uh, that's it. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> Mr. Fawn was here when the governor was here. Uh, Mrs. Fawn was my third grade teacher and I have very fond memories. And a couple of Christmas ornaments and the still are displayed on my mom's Christmas tree from Mrs. Fawn. <laughs> so uh, we uh, certainly congratulate those folks on their retirement. All right. Any objections to the motion? The motion passes. Number 18, the FMLA leaves. <clears throat> I move that Michelle Hall, L. Uh, Lincoln High School teacher be granted a family medical leave for a 12 foot period yes. effective May 1st, 2015. D, I move that Shannon McGuire, Lincoln High School teacher be granted a family medical leave for a 12 foot period effective April 7th, 2015. Second. Mr. Question. Bob Stevens. Go. The family, family medical leave for May 1st. Does that run into the summer or into the fall? Probably. I mean, I'm, she hasn't put the next part of that in yet. I wouldn't think that. The family medical leave would be effective May 1st through the end of the school year. She's entitled to 12 weeks. So it won't be 12 weeks. Well, she could choose to, in August, continue the family medical leave. At this point, we're kind of waiting to see what she decides she wants to do. But from May 1 to the end of the school year would be portion of the family medical leave, then the summer comes, and then if she That's chooses right. to take additional time, she can have it. Any other questions? Any objections? Motion passes. It's all we have to end with. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Brings us to properties and transportation. Ms. Pansera. Thank you, Mr. President. Facility requests A. LA City Amateur Baseball Federation requests permission to use Perry Lower Intermediate School Playground and Field for youth baseball practice on Wednesdays from 5 to 8 p.m., Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. from April to June, April, now, to June 2015. That's week page, not Wednesday. I think they want it every week. Yeah, I was concerned with when it starts. I think it's just the entire months, I assume. B, REC Youth Wrestling requests permission to use the Lincoln High School cafeteria for wrestling practice on Monday through Friday from November 1st, 2015 through March 31st, 2016 from 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. I move that the facility request be approved as presented. Second. Oh, sorry, Mr. Stevens. Discussion. Mr. Keeley, the use of that period in a school field, that's not going to interfere with any of the No, that's been a pretty consistent thing. The Federation has always treated that pretty well. We don't have anything more on the field there. Any other questions? Any objections? Motion passes. That's all I have, Mr. President. Wow. <laughs> we to report there, Ms. Pansera. <laughs> Next we'll go to Student Affairs and Athletics, Mr. Cortez. Thank you, Mr. President. I have 20 textbook purchased. The Secondary Administration has recommended the adoption of the following book. Hal Leonard Guitar and <coughs> Edition by Will Schmidt and Greg Cohn. Publishing company is Hal Leonard. The ISBN number is 0881881392. Book has been on display for 30 days. I move it be adopted and that the administration be authorized to proceed with the purchase. Second. Mr. Patron. Any questions? 
Any objections? Motion passes. 21, special education plan, 2015 through 2018. Special education plan has been on display since March 19th and will remain on display until April 16th, 2015. I move the plan be approved as presented, contingent upon no changes being made prior to April 16th, and it be incorporated into the minutes of this evening's meeting. Second, Ms. Pansera. Any questions? Any objections? Motion passes. 22, elementary student handbook. In your folders are changes to the elementary student handbook as recommended by the administration for the 2015-16 school year. I move the change be approved as presented. Second, Ms. Pansera. Any questions? Any objections? Motion passes. 23, athletic expenditure report. In your folder is the athletic expenditure report as of March 31st, 2015. It reflects total monthly expenditures of $14,668.58. I move the report to be approved as presented. Second. Second. Sarah. Any questions? Any objections? Motion passes. That's all I have tonight, Mr. President, under student affairs and athletics. Thank you, Mr. Cortez. Uh, recognition and communication, Mr. Stevenson. Uh, sir, I have none to report this evening, unless they just didn't give them to me. No, they said they didn't have Everybody's bad. Uh, we, yeah. we did honor state champions, so that's, that's pretty yes, good. Yes, we did honor chair. Okay, do we have uh, anything under new business? We want to discuss the um, senior privilege. Share to? I would like to discuss the senior privilege. Where's yours? Well, it came to our. Um, I found out this week about senior privilege, privilege, and um, I'm not sure since I didn't have the luxury of speaking with the rest of the board what your opinions are on it. Um, I had heard about it, went in and spoke to Mr. Mancini. And couple of you have already heard me say this. Um, I honestly didn't think it was legit because I heard it on the street. Um, but, he, you know, he explained why, and, you know, uh, listening to his reasonings, and I, I understand where you guys are coming from. Um, I think that as a board, we are going to have to make some um, decisions on how we're going to be notified of certain things, which I'm sure that will come. But after thinking about senior privilege, as you guys are putting it, for this last week, um, I have to say I'm against it. And I don't, like I said, I don't know how the rest of the board feels about it, but um, I think that we are setting a bad example. Um, I think that we need to, to provide the education. If we're having problems, we need to hire, we need to hire a teacher to um, fill the slots so that you have an easier time scheduling. Um, I think that we need to, to look at what we need to do to make that process easier for you. I think by letting them out that we are opening ourselves up to, first of all, having a hard time tracking them because you have kids coming in early, you have kids leaving. Um, you, they're gonna be hanging around the school waiting for their friends. I mean, I just think the, the main thing, my problem is, is that you know we're supposed to be defenders of public education. And I see, I feel like this is kind of letting, dropping the ball, saying, oh, you've done enough. I mean, I see your point. I'm not saying I don't see your point. I just think that we can do better for our kids. I think we owe it to them to provide the education for it to be there to them. Ms. Gross? Um, could we just have senior privilege to explain a little bit briefly? I'm not exactly 100% sure what that means. I'll start and I'll let Mr. Lady chime in. Um, came about through. Uh, Lake coming to me and saying, you know, we're going to have a problem with uh, electives because uh, students, you know, as seniors fill up electives and juniors fill up electives, by the time you get to underclassmen, a lot of the electives are full. Uh, my comment to him was, my son leaves every day senior year. We sign him out every day, he leaves from uh, either one or two periods. He has that option. Um, let's look into it. And, um, 
and I think Mr. Lape started the scheduling process today, and uh, we looked at some other schools that do it. And, uh, we saw you know, we saw their forms, how they do it, and uh, we thought that as a senior, um, once you fulfill your graduation requirements, uh, we didn't want seniors maybe who didn't have a job uh, taking up electives that uh, just to take classes. A lot of times, you know, sometimes they were in study halls also. Um, so uh, it gives them that option to, you know, as parents, again, this is an option. It's not the standard that if a parent, you know, signs off and the, the student's on track to graduate, um, principal, I believe, guidance counselor look at the applications. They have to be in good academic standing. They have to be, uh, you know, behavior issues uh, have to be, you know, under control and uh, financial any no debts and so on. Um, and if they went through that process, they were on track to graduate, got their credits to graduate within their senior year, um, taking the classes um, and not maybe fill up their schedule and affect other students in the lower classes who need electives, um, we gave them that option. Um, Mr. Lake, do you want to fill in as far as yes. I missed anything? Well, uh, this sums it up. To me, it's an option that the parents agree to. Um, and that's the way we posed it to the juniors when I met with them last week, gave them the information. We did schedule the juniors that are going to be seniors already. The numbers that came in um, right off the bat were there was 38 students that chose to do that out of the 100, and, I believe 20 in that grade or 130 in that grade. So that's where we stand right now with it. Um, parents, the ones that get grant permission, um, could have students stick around and just be in study halls or take a class here and there could do that as well and continue to do that. That, uh, that causes issues for freshmen and sophomores when the classes aren't available for them to schedule. We're halfway through the scheduling process and it's been pretty flawless. Um, we only have a handful of elective classes that are closed at this point. So um, to me it's an option for, for seniors and their parents to decide. If their parents choose to do it, then uh, I'm in favor. Question now, when you say uh, that they're on track to graduate and everything, that's including what they need next year. That year. So Standard kid, senior, if you take your eight classes, no study halls, freshman, sophomore, junior year, you're at 24 credits. Our requirements are 25. But you have to take four years of English, four years of math, four years of social studies, four years of science. So going into their senior year, they still need a math and English. PE, if they haven't taken health yet. So there's still five or six required periods for them to take. And those are the five or six that they are fulfilling while they're here. And then they have the privilege to leave uh, or come in or come in late. I mean, could it backfire on a, on a kid that screws around a little too much senior year and then they, by not having some extra credits, they... No, because they're still taking the classes that they're required to take. They have the credits. The credits aren't the option. It's, it's the required classes. So they would still be taking those classes no matter what. So they know that, I mean, for instance, when I taught German economics, 12th grade, one first day came out of my mouth talking to those seniors, first day of school, I need my class to graduate. So that's the essence that those students are in. They're taking the, the history, the English, the science, and the social study, and the math. They need those classes anyway. liability sake, um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I was pretty good at my mom's signature by the time I was a senior. If they're filling out this, <laughs> yeah, we all chuckle when we all done it. Um, if, if Mr. DeCaro, I guess this goes to you, if um, they forge their parents' signature and now they're getting out half day and they get in trouble, is that going to fall back on us? Parents, so. I mean, parents say they We're going to do an all call it. once scheduling's done with those that have signed that. So there will be a call point from the parents indicating that your son or daughter has a schedule. Yeah. 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 I think our job is to educate them. And I, I totally see your side, what you're saying. I'm not disagreeing with that, but I just think that we need to do better. If we had more choose work release, We've had as many as 20 to 30 
in a school year choose work release because that's currently on the books. There's no difference. So, I mean, you've, we've had 30 seniors at one time <coughs> leave early. But they're working. And well, these, a lot of these students are working too. But they then they're, they, those people won't be affected. They'll still be getting out on work release. But they have to prove that they're working, that they're doing something, that they're not just, you know, to me, I have a feeling you're going to hit that, that, that group of kids who are just getting by and, you know, oh, they're just not going to go or they're going to come in late or they're, they're going to leave early. And, you know, those extra classes, maybe something will spark them. You know, you just don't know. I just, I, I just feel that our job is to provide the education, and I think that we're setting, I, I think we're, we're setting a bad example by saying, yeah, it doesn't matter. You've reached your, you know, you've done what you had to do, and if you want to take it, you can. And I, I see what you're saying. It's a parent's choice, but they could also come in and say, I don't want my kid to go to school for two hours every day or, or two periods if they really felt that way without giving them that option. I just don't like that we're giving the kids an option because let's face it, at that age. You have your overachievers and you have the rest of them. And if you're giving, if you're going to ask me, do I have to go to school now or I can come in third period? I'm coming in third period. I'm sleeping. So I think you're just you're just letting them get away with something that they need to be kind of held accountable to, to at least be here. That's my opinion. Uh, I see your point, but I somewhat agree. I think you're um, this is giving kids a, an easy way out. Letting them get maybe a little bit lazy. I think I mentioned before is uh, you know, they uh, get some some bad habits before they head off to college, and they get hit with a big dose of reality whenever they're taking the full load, and, uh, and maybe they created some bad habits that are going to come back to bite them whenever they go off to college. I don't know. I guess it's really going to depend on the, the kid. other questions or discussions regarding this topic? I think it's pretty good. I think, you know, the school board should interfere with the schedule. That's, that's a good It's not like he's 
he's motivated, he's going to school, he's gonna wrestle, he's going right. to so I mean it just fit into his lifestyle. We chose that. We could have very easily said his parents, you know what, you're going to school all day. But we didn't. So I mean like Mr. Lape said it's an option that it And like fit you said, it's an option. It's not like a demand, it's not like they have to Right and um, again it's parental decision. It's it's if they want their child to take electives or they see some class or whatever, even the student is interested in a subject that they, they, they want to take. Um, they still have that, hey mom, I want to take this class, so they take it. If not, they don't. And it leaves an option, an opening for those underclassmen who get stuck in study halls or it's not there. So um, we solved our issue as far as scheduling and we've got a lot of experience in master schedules. Um, been doing it for a long time and uh, again it's an option. One year you might not have any kids take advantage of it. You might have five. And then one year you might have 25. It just depends on the keep to the cyber school to decide to take the cyber course. Any course that they that we offer through RCI, Mr. Sobin finds it. That's always an option. So these kids could be taking a class in school, say ninth period or no, first period. Because we need a, a teacher with that. To when he sets cyber. up on cyber, that could be done anywhere. If we have that option and to put them in a room, then yes we could, but now that's just another it's a staff member that I need for cyber classes ninth period or eighth period. Where I don't want I need a body for that. I thought cyber was taught they they self teach. If somebody's gotta be with the kids. If you have okay. put them on you have synchronous and asynchronous. So synchronous is they're learning along with the teachers. It's almost like a live classroom shot. The asynchronous model is what we've kind of adopted where our teachers still support and do the grading and do the paperwork and they provide options for the students and you know help the students through. But again, students use it typically at home. We have we do have kids that come in to do a hybrid schedule where they come in for part of the school day if they can't replicate a class online, they do need to come in for a chemistry class or physics class, they just can't get that information online, and then we do offer that hybrid option to the rest of the classes. So we've been very flexible with that and, and trying to meet the needs of students, and it's really helped um, from losing a lot of kids to uh, typical charter and cyber schools. With, uh, what other area districts, uh, say in the county, offer the secret privilege like when I went to my last track time principals meeting, I asked that question. Um, nobody has a label for it like we put on it with student privilege. Um, everybody does work in least a little bit different. I'm not going to mention schools here in public, but one school has a parent sign off that a kid has a job and they never check it the rest of the year. Uh, two or three schools are like that. We currently, with our work release, have a teacher that check the pay stubs every two weeks. Some schools do that, other schools don't. So did they necessarily put a label on it? No. Uh, where we really got the idea was from the center for the state out of Mannheim. Uh, bigger school district, I actually tried to contact them to ask some specifics and their school districts so big that I got put off on about three different people. Um, but I did find their policy online, um, locally, I think we also uh, yeah, Slipper Rock, I thought, was uh, for somebody else in Butler County, but everybody dices it up a little bit different, you know, how you do work with this sort of privilege. If I remember something, too, years ago when I first got here as assistant principal, we used to have right about 60 kids that used to be on work with these, but there was no checking on those kids. It was just, it was, kids would say they had a job at the beginning of the year, and if they lost their job, there was no them back it was just okay you signed out at the beginning of the year um, once we started regulating it and had a teacher in charge of checking his pay stubs it dropped down to like 30. <coughs> 15 this year 15 so so it just varies as far as uh, but if you check them you know that, I mean, we had kids 60 kids there that, 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 i guarantee it 50 of them right that job Senior privilege isn't just work with us, so, is that correct? Correct, right. They can get out, I mean, if they reach the criteria, they can get out for any of Two periods. Two periods, right? Well, this is 
something that originally heard about the thought of that something sounded like something that I could support. Of course everybody has and my thing was I well, I almost didn't know enough about it. It's done before the board was informed. Mrs. Petrelli had brought up some interesting points. I think that uh, one of the concerns is like someone like Mr. Mancini is going to be an exception. I'm sure there are students who are going to use that time very well. I think her concern is... It's not the ones that are going to take the time. <laughs> I, I understand that. <clears throat> All right. But I know heard more about it tonight than prior to this. All right, anything else under new business? Since we're still speaking about scheduling, um, and I had mentioned this earlier, um, and I think I mentioned it at the last meeting too, about um, the generous offer from Forge about getting our fab lab together. And I know you're still working and hoping and trying, but um, you know you guys are scheduling for next year, so I'm guessing this is not part of the schedule for us to have this. And we're still down to what we need is for the teacher. Is there more than, than that? Because we haven't really been updated, per se, in how, how things are progressing with your... Typically, what, what we have and what I'm trying to package together for you <coughs> is the entire program, the paper space, the curriculum, and the So um, I'm confident I can lay in the lab itself, uh, the materials, and the paper of the lab. Curriculum is quite expensive. It's something that we're looking at ways to pull out of board so that it's something that's usable for the students and not to get benefit in terms of like the free engineering experience. So I'm digging and scraping for more money to get that together and I'm also still looking for money to provide the instructor in this case. So I have a meeting on the 15th with some individuals and as a district, as, as a committee at the high school, we're looking at how can we do this to make it make the most sense for the students. But if we can lay those pieces together to make it make sense for everybody, I'm sure Mr. Lake can go back into the schedule and, and make the changes needed that we can offer to students as soon as we can turn the switch on. Well, again, you know, there's a lot of things that I'm still learning in the scheduling and timing and so on. And I feel like um, there's a lot that I, I, I still have to be told or, or, or taught or whatever. I mean, I, I was so hopeful that we were going to be able to, to bring, this in, uh, bring this in in 2000. Actually, we were hoping this year was halfway through the year. And I would hope as a board that we can discuss if, if we need a teacher and he can pull the rest together. I don't feel that the Forge is going to wait forever for us. I think we've been given a gift that we are, are, are using. And I feel like if whatever we need to do, we need to do it, and we need to do it now so that it is there and ready for next year before we lose their beautiful gift that they're giving us. And um, I would like to think that the rest of you are feeling the same way, and I think we become so overwhelmed with all the extra things that are thrown at us. Again, we're still not able to sit down and, and look ahead and plan the things that we'd like to see happen. So I'm... I would like to see us move forward if that's what you need and we can provide a teacher for you and you can pull the rest of this together for next year, then I would like to see us be able to sit down and talk about that as a board and, and um, get this resolved so that we are all, all moving in the same direction so that you know we do up our curriculum, we get some more, some more um, opportunities for our kids and you know maybe we need to look at hiring you know, what else can we offer? What, what do we need to do? I mean, I feel like we need to invest back into these kids' future. And if they're having problems filling slots and kids don't have enough to take, then, you know, we need to find a way to, to make that happen. Especially with this lab, because this is way too important for us. We're not going to have another opportunity like this. I would like to think that it came down to Yes, because I, I 
and really want to see that in place for next year. So what's, what's the timeline? You have a couple of meetings coming up, two meetings coming up. changes that we probably have to make to the initial layout. Um, Ford was really offering metal working equipment and it's a lot of it's a lot of money. But what we actually need is more of the technology side, the the actual make materials. So we have to kind of go back and redraft that and ask them, you know, we need these materials, can you support that? Forge needs engineers. Forge needs people like that to work for them. So Try to get them to see the worth in that because they were really upfront with whatever metal machine we want. We'll get that for you right now. Remember, right now, we get it. But what I need them to see is that not only do we need that end of it, but we need to make the materials so we get kids to think and engineer and to make so that they can actually get to that point where they are employable. Hopefully, an employee that they can use. Right? And I think we'll see the worth in that. And um, our net inroads with the Port Foundation um, with the application. lab could be that makerspace lab that area in the back could be so it's not just um, I, I want it to be a place where teachers are going to bring kids that are going to collaborate and solve problems and projects and project based so it's not just a class it's not just an area where you know where one teacher has metal work or maybe a metal shop it's got to be a whole collaboration where a social studies teacher can bring a person to this you know the class into this area and do some things. Um, but aren't you talking about two different things though? Because it seems to me if he, if we need a teacher to run this, these specific things, then that is going well, to you're be Well, you have 203, a, a you've class. got a class over there, you've got okay. another area, you've got the library, which I want to change right. also. So um, talking to, you know, the, the librarian, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's going to be a process. It's renovating the library, changing the way the library looks, dividing it, you know, walls that move, uh, you know, so um, I've encouraged her to go look at other school districts that have learning commons like that, that um, include all those ideas of, you know, creativity. And, um, but the so, metal, going back to what the Forge originally asked for, is that what Riverside has, I have to ask? It's, yeah, the Riverside has something. Very similar? I thought they wanted to do something different here than they had at Riverside. They wanted to closely replicate what they did at Riverside here. Oh. Okay. The way I was steering them was we really want to invest heavily in the maker end of all this because I think you're going to drive a lot more creativity. I think you're going to get a lot more out of them than the experiences that they're, they're initially designing at Riverside. So I still have that dream, that, that, that focus of getting the students to have that true maker experience where they can go in and develop, prefabricate, engineer, and look at all those aspects because it's, it's very, very different than what they do over at Riverside. Right. But the, the, the Forge, I think the Forge sees the worth in it. I think the Forge also knows that they need to make people that are, un, understand how to use their machines and understand how to come over and do a horizontal boring mill. So by the time they get down the Forge, they know how to run a horizontal boring mill 
I think that's important. It's definitely important, but that doesn't fit the needs of all of the students that we have. I'm not, like I said, I'm not looking for money now. I, I definitely want to use that new lot. Right. I just need to turn it and, and help it into, you know, kind of solve what we want for the programs here. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, if that's not what they're looking to do, is that something that is that a program that we could still utilize here? I mean, is it still something that 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 you think that there would be interest in? Doing it just that what they're talking about as, <laughs> as it sits right now on the table. I would think if you look at, you know, we we have a comprehensive CTC. We have the Lawrence County Career Technical Center that we rely on heavily to teach our students those skills. Okay. Riverside is in that case, they only have a part time uh, Career Technical Center. So that that skill, that subset, I'm not going to tell you I don't, I don't want the kids to learn metal skills. I don't want to tell you the kids aren't going to need to know how to weld. If you look at Marcella Shell Industries, if you look at the up and coming industries, those kids are going to do very, very well for themselves. But you know, we can better apply money here and look at the actual maker side of all this and replicate all the way through the programs. You're going to have a comprehensive program from kindergarten all the way through senior high in, in terms of that maker, that, in that engineering technique. And that's where we kind of one, that's what we want. Into, right. Oh, I'm, I agree. agree totally with you. I'm just, you know, not wanting to, you know, upset the table. I it's, a, it's, a, it's a very delicate tactic. Absolutely. The, the high tech lathe that the Forge bought the Riverside bought the identical one for the Lawrence County for the tech. And since Riverside, Beaver County doesn't have one of those two here there in the tech that they bought that one specifically for Lawrence County. Oh, for Riverside. Because our students, you have access to one. Yeah, yeah I, I, we, we definitely have a huge opportunity here. We're, we're not going to leave it go. We're not going to keep pushing the buttons and putting their hands out. We'll, we'll get the money in. I'm confident about that. So I just uh, want to make it make sense for everybody. Make sure we go the right way with that. It's, it's a program, it's, it's a process. It really is. It's not like a. You oh. just can't turn on the lights, but you wish to do it. Oh, I know that you've been working at it very diligently for a very long time. We have a great team here that's going to make it happen. It's too important for our students. Right. Oh, I just wanted to make sure that we are, we're all on the same page because I think there's a lot of things that we're not all on the same page with. So that if, if we need to, to act more quickly, that we are ready to do that and not, it's not sprung and we, oh, we, we don't have anything. <laughs> we appreciate The administration appreciates that. Anything else from the board? Mr. Stevenson. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm late for you, but thanks for calling. And uh, I would like to comment on the senior uh, dismissal program. And when I first read it, I thought, what the hell is this? And I'm sure lots of people thought that. Especially when I found out about the ants passing the DSSAs out of the <laughs> I told him, I called Mr. Mancini and I told him that I had on good authority that 10 of them were coached. And that they really weren't going to pass fourth grade. Anyway, we get, that was a little bit of fun within that program. After giving this a lot of thought, this senior idea, there's a lot of merit in Not so much that we're just saying, hit the road, you've done enough, as Renee said. You know, that's not what we're saying. I think what we're saying here is you're about to become an adult. You're within one year of having adult privileges. Okay? So let's give you just a couple of privileges that the other students don't have. And let's see how you handle it. So make it part of the educational process. If they're properly controlled, only the students that are on track to graduate. Not disciplinary problems. They're disciplinary problems, no, you stay in school. Okay? If they're on track, they're ready to go, you're still, all right, let's ease you into adulthood just a little bit, just a, just a smidge, a couple periods a day. Let's see how you handle it. If you screw up and you wind up doing something illegal, well, the guys with a funny looking answer who we're talking to you. You know, parents, of course, have to be part of this. And like she said, we've all done it, so 
not just a signature. We have to have had a personal contact. One of the administrators has to have had a contact. Personal contact with the parent got their approval. Okay? Properly controlled, I think this could solve their problem with scheduling and cutting the younger kids out of program, which happened even back when I was in school. Woodshop, you couldn't get in Woodshop unless you were a senior. So you were a freshman, a sophomore, or a junior. Back, sorry, you don't have any room. But I really think this could be it. This could be able to do this. Well, anyway, that's my question. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. All right, with uh, nothing further, we will adjourn to go into, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go back to the visitors, I forgot. Mm -hmm. With all my friends. <laughs> um, come and sit no. up here. <laughs> I'm just, I, I hope this is a comment because I know you can't talk about personnel that's in your executive. But I just hope that with the retirees, you really consider not losing those positions. As a teacher, I know what it takes to do things in elementary school. And if you put more things on when you're already asking teachers to do data, to do dibbles and to do all these programs that are being asked of us as educators now, it would be really hard if you eliminate positions because of funding. And I'm sure with them there, they're at the top of the list. So they make up here. When you bring in teachers that are younger and start out, you're obviously still saving money, but you're still not losing positions because that's really important. And it's really hard because I sit here as a parent, but my passion is my teaching. And it's been my passion for 17 years. And like I go back and forth if I should move my son, who's a sixth grader, to a different district. A, come to me with to get what I see happens in my district, or to send him somewhere else around here. <clears throat> My daughter, obviously, who's in seventh grade, she's invested with friends and things that are here that I can't take away from her. But I just hope that you think about that when you cut these teaching positions and you do things because it affects the good kids as well as the ones that don't care and are never here and you'll never see their parents. But I do it because I do care and my kids wanna go to college and I want them to get what they need to go to college. Um, obviously, you all know that my brother teaches here because it's not a secret. And I do things for me because I'm the oldest and I was the one that did things first. <sighs> David doesn't talk to me about things because that's my brother if you really knew him. And I had pride in the fact that my kids were gonna get to have their uncle in this district. And I didn't go here, we went to Riverside because we're on that side of Elwood. But it just bothers me, things that I do hear from parents around who aren't educated, and I, yes, I am educated. And I just hope that when you make these decisions that you're doing what's right for these kids and not just my own, but for other kids that don't have the families that stick up for them. And I am, I'm really nervous about what's happening in Elwood, why would you want to come to Elwood City? I can't even think about selling my house because there's so many for sale because what's in Elwood, and it's true, there's no jobs anymore. The businesses have moved out besides the forge that's still here. And so it's a scary situation when you have kids in, a, in any district now, but especially here when there's not classes that are offered and I was going to say a spiel on show papers, but that's just down the tubes, too. I get why you would want kids to be able to have that freedom to go. I get it now that I hear what you say. But at the same time, it's just a scary situation because my son isn't in music. He's not in extra things because my son is an introvert and can't handle that kind of stuff. So I think, okay, what's he going to get with Elwood? because there aren't electives here that there are in other places that he could do and it's intrinsically for him. So that's my two cents that 
it does. It scares me. And I have to make decisions about what's right for my son, whether he wants to be here or not, because he's still in fifth grade and I can still dictate his life, unlike my daughter, who said, I'm not moving. And I will be with Uncle David if you move, because I'm not leaving Elwood and my friends. So I just hope you think about that when you do staffing and you think about the kids and not just about the business that yes it's a business but it's these kids that are our future and if we don't have things for them to do why would they want to be here thank you very much i'd like to see what you have no it's just like things that are offered like at my where i teach and I still like to see different it. things so you, you can have it it's just online okay thank you again